Well, I'm Ken Thompson, and uh, I'm supposed to be giving a presentation on my model railroad, uh, the Peoria subdivision of the CB&Q Railroad. And uh, recently, I changed uh, eras on my layout you know, a little over a year ago, from 1980 to 1964. So it went from uh, BN to uh, CB&Q. Uh, well, what you're going to see is... Uh, a lot of the pictures are still going to be in the BN era, but uh, we'll try to get through this. And uh, this first picture here, uh, my friend Dave Nelson uh, is very familiar with this. This is the uh, South Milwaukee Depot where Dave, both Dave and I uh, grew up. Um, he's kind of a youngster compared to me, though, because I saw a lot of steam locomotives go by here. And uh, let's see, here we in fact, this is the first drawing I ever made in my life uh, that my dad <laughs> saved. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, April 1947. Uh, you can calculate how many years ago that was, 76 or something like that. Anyway, uh, I'm sure this was a Chicago Northwestern Pacific uh, because that's what I usually saw at the depot area there when my mother would take me over to grandma's house every other day. And... Uh, so at least I got uh, two big wheels in the middle and a little wheels on the end. So I kind of knew what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I got a smokestack. I think I got a a sand dome and maybe a bell and a cab. And it looks like maybe a fireman sticking his head out the window here. So uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was how I my whole railroad uh, interest started, kind of. <laughs> nice. So uh, jump ahead about twenty years. Uh, uh, you're probably wondering why a guy that grew up next to the Northwestern and the Milwaukee Road in the Milwaukee area is modeling the CB&Q. Well, it's all because of this lady here. Uh, it was my first wife. She passed away about 20 years ago. But uh, her uh, grandpa was a, a CB&Q engineer. That's him there in a white cap in the cab of the 4998, a CB&Q O&A uh, Mikado. And unfortunately, I don't know the name. It was firemen there, but uh, so that's where it all kind of started. Then, uh, well, we started dating, going together, and I first went to Galesburg a year after this photo was taken. Mm. So uh, railroad-wise, this 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 place kind of like popped my eyeballs out because man, I'd never seen railroading at this level before. I mean, if you look from right here, looking down at the depot. And go five miles west. That'll that's where the end of the art is. <laughs> so uh, a lot of action going on here. Uh, this is the uh, unfortunately this depot got torn down in 1983. The uh, 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 S4 uh, Hudson CB&Q engine that's still there. Uh, I think. Uh, what do you think, Dave? I think three of these tracks are here, and maybe one other one. Like they uh, they ripped one out and then put one back in again. So, right, yeah, over on this side over here. I don't. Can you? I guess you can see my cursor, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, here's a train coming in, probably from the Quad Cities. You know, Rock Island, Moline, East Moline, Davenport area, with a bunch of uh, farm implement stuff on it. Uh, here's the uh, famous uh, CB and Q uh, excursion engine, forty nine uh, sixty. And uh, this photo was taken in 1966, so I'm thinking this is probably the last time that engine left Galesburg. It was hmm. headed for Chicago to do an excursion from Chicago up to uh, Den Rock in the northwestern part of Illinois and then back to Chicago. And then uh, I, I don't recall where it went from there, but there's three other passenger trains in the depot, so it was pretty busy and it kind of, uh, you know, captured my interest for sure. Here's another photo looking eastward towards Chicago in the same depot area. And the freight train here and a switch engine switching some railroad, some uh, passenger cars out. So a little further down the road here, uh, we're just going past the uh, engine facility. Um, uh, this was the uh, big uh, concrete coaling tower here. That's a squat one. I've never seen one that, that shape. That one, that's that was big. Uh, unfortunately, they blew it up. Oh gosh, I don't know. I think in the early two thousands or something. And when they 
It was yeah. part of the uh, yard expansion and all that. Here's a diesel fuel tank here over here on the left. And Okay, moving on. This is from the 4th Street Bridge in Galesburg. This is another shot I took in the uh, early 70s. Look in the same direction. The cooling tower is still there. It's not being used anymore, but there's still a couple of locomotives painted C, B, and Q. Here's another shot looking uh, westward from the bridge, uh, looking toward the uh, west uh, westbound receiving yard uh, for the westbound hump. And uh, they had two hump yards there. Uh, I guess during World War II, they, they originated at least 200 trains a day there. So the uh, yard's about five miles away from where I am right here. May, well, maybe four miles there. Okay, jump ahead another, gosh, how many years? <laughs> well, this is 2004. Um, when my wife died, uh, I don't know, uh, I had my own business in that, and it was uh, kind of hard for me to operate the thing by myself without my bookkeeper and everything. So I thought I'd give a stab at uh, real railroading. So here's me, uh, the conductor on a UP train shoving back in Milwaukee from uh, Jones Island toward our little yard in uh, Mitchell Yard there. So we'd shove, shove back to the yard about five miles. <laughs> uh, I still do a little conductoring at the East Troy Electric Railroad out in uh, East Troy, uh, you know, west of Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, that was me uh, this Christmas. Uh, Okay, so getting down to the model railroad, um, I moved into my present house in 1972, and that's when I started my layout. It wasn't, uh, it certainly wasn't the BN then or the CB and Q. I, I was kind of influenced by the John Allen thing. So I was kind of modeling mountain and terrain and all that, and steam locomotives. I did have a couple of diesels. So here was my first railroad, the Pine Hollow. And uh, and then uh, later in the 70s, I got to, about reading about Alan McClellan and all that and, and prototype freelance railroading. So I tried this. Was, this was the MNWI, uh, the Milwaukee and Western Illinois Railroad, that supposedly went from Milwaukee to uh, Galesburg, Illinois, where my wife was from. And, uh, okay, jump ahead, maybe another 10 years. Well, this was uh, a photo the local newspaper took of uh, uh, open house I had for the uh, 1985 NMRA convention in Milwaukee, which was the 50th anniversary of the NMRA. And uh, that's me over here when I still had hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this big tall guy here, I think you know who he is. He's, he's right over here, Dave Nelson. <laughs> that's my mm -hmm. son in the foreground and a couple of visitors. But uh, yeah, I was, I can see a couple of BN cars. So I definitely had to make a choice when the convention came around. They wanted me to settle on a theme for the layout. So it became the Peoria subdivision of the, the Burlington Northern Railroad. So that continued on, oh gosh, all through the late 80s into the 90s. And then uh, in the early 2000s, I've been, began to be a little dissatisfied with the railroad. I wanted all the towns and the scenery and that to look like real places. So uh, here's the tear up crew tearing up uh, what's what's left of Peoria here before we start laying new track. So uh, all the towns I modeled, except for the staging area, of course, are, are modeled after the real towns. All the uh, track arrangements are proper. All the switches are there, except for Peoria's a little, little more condensed. Well, not condensed lengthwise and widthwise. I couldn't fit all 14 tracks in there, but I've got at least 10 tracks. So, so yeah, this was uh, the new construction at Yates City here. I was building a 40 inch plus radius curve here with spline road bed. And uh, I really got into a lot of handling. I already done some handling even back in the early seventies, but uh, I really got into it here with this Proto 87 store stuff where you get a kit for all the jigs to lay out the ties and the templates and uh, you even even put the individual tie plates down the slide plates the hook plates here for the uh, frog and all that sort of thing so uh, all my uh, turnouts at Peoria in the yard and a lot of other places are are all scratch builder handling okay so uh, 
about 2016 or 17, Dave Rickabeef, uh, that does articles for uh, Great Model Railroads and Model Railroader magazine, approached me. And uh, I knew Dave a little bit before, but uh, he, he said, well, how would you like your layout in a photo spread in Great Model Railroads? I go like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> uh, they wanted a plan. So having been a draftsman in my past life, uh, drew up a half inch to the foot uh, scale plan for them that they used in the magazine. Here's the one in the magazine. Oops, it's, well, it's, I, I don't know, are all those pictures blocking uh, um, the view no, and your view or not? I don't know. No, we can oh. see it. it, looks good. Oh, okay, good, you can see the whole thing. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you guys are all way on the left of the screen. Anyway, all right, this is, uh, this is basically my house and the layout basically goes around the shelves. Uh, there's bookcases and sh uh, cabinets and stuff built under most of it. And uh, so this is the staging yard here, which represents Galesburg. It also represents the other end of the line where the uh, CB and Q interchanges with many other railroads, uh, but mainly the uh, Peoria and Pekin Union and the TP and W. So leaving staging here, we uh, come to Gilson, uh, which is just a small farm community. Uh, claim the fame as a grain elevator. Well, I did have stockyards there at one time and a, uh, some coal dealer bins and that sort of thing. And we, we come around the uh, bottom of the picture here and cross Little Hawk Creek. And then we come to Gilson, which is only a two turnout siding. Uh, there's mainly a fertilizer deal there there was wr grace and uh i can't see this part so i'll just have to <laughs> wing it but this uh yates city is over here on the uh on the right side of the screen there that was kind of an important spot on the real railroad uh the real railroad is 50 miles from uh, uh galesburg down to peoria and the Yates city was about the halfway point i mean you can see uh, there's a part of the Y that I modeled there. That actually went down to the uh, Fulton County coal fields. It went uh, headed down toward Canton and Lewiston, um, a couple really big strip mines. And eventually it went down to uh, Beardstown and then St. Louis. Yeah, here's uh, kind of a map of the real thing here. I kind of outlined in red. You can see uh, Galesburg kind of here in the middle. Then as you proceed to the right, you're going eastward. Uh, you hit Gilson right here. Uh, Douglas isn't even on here. It's but it's halfway between Gilson and Eight City. Eight City's right here, and you can see the line heading south out of Eight City, going down toward Canton and Saint David, Dunfermline, Dunfermline. And uh, I don't scenically model the rest of this till we get to Peoria. So there's. 25 miles of the railroad I don't model, but then you finally get down to Peoria here. Uh, okay, uh, the first town, uh, as you remember, we came to was was Gilson. Here's the real track map. Um, There's just a long, long siding here for passing trains or meeting trains and uh, the elevator track in here. And uh, here's a shot I took of uh, the real Gilson oh, back in about uh, 1984 or 5. Uh, you can see it was uh, heavily in the Purina Chavos at one time here. It, it's still currently a feed mill, but it's not railroad served anymore. At one time, they actually exported probably corn out of here, and some of that might have actually gone to Peoria back in the era I'm modeling now. Uh, here's a one of the shots that uh, Dave Rickaby took for uh, Great Model Railroad magazine. And uh, yeah, most of the stuff uh, here, it was uh, kit bash from Walter's kits and Rick's stuff like that with the elevator legs and the grain bins. Uh, you can see the, the siding or the passing track in the foreground. There's a unit coal train going east here over on the main track. And uh, the siding's in the weeds, you can't even see it. Uh, kind of the same thing, looking the other direction toward uh, Galesburg. Yeah, one of my goals when I built the railroad, uh, the new part of the railroad was to have uncluttered scenery. So I think I kind of achieved my goal that way. 
So here's another scene at Gilson. Cow was coming down the water. Uh, another scene at Gilson with the end of a BN train uh, going eastbound toward Peoria. Another scene halfway between uh, Gilson and Douglas with an empty unit train coming back to Galesburg. Another coal train passing over Little Hawk Creek. There's Little Hawk Creek with a BN locomotive passing over it. And then we come to Douglas, the smallest place on the layout. It's just uh, two switches and a fertilizer dealer. Uh, they, they also got tank cars of uh, liquid nitrogen there. Here's a shot of the real thing. Uh, I model these actual buildings here to, by looking at Google Maps and trying to figure out what size they were. So I, I model them full size. There's a potash car right here. They had kind of a neat deal here. This uh, auger could run along on a rail here and then uh, dump the contents from the cars into these hatches in the roofs of the uh, building there. Uh, so this was a model of the same place uh, in the BN era on my layout. And uh, now I've removed that modern building over here and cover it up with some bushes. So. <laughs> Yeah, we come to uh, Yates City. This is uh, the west switch at Yates City, uh, heading into the passing track. And here's the track schematic of the real thing at Yates City here. Uh, you can see the the Y. There's a stock pens in the center here. There's the elevator track. Uh, there were uh, this is the long passing track here, and there was a north storage and a south storage track for hopper cars. Almost every train they went by there either set out empty uh, coal cars or picked up loaded ones either to take back to Galesburg <laughs> or Peoria. Now, here's a shot of the real Yates City Depot, which is quite old. I'm not sure when this photo was taken, but probably in the early 1900s. Um, the track arrangement uh, in my era really hadn't changed at all. These The, the switches are in the same place. I just found out that this uh, uh, two-story building here was there in my current or, or my new era. So I might be building that to put on the layout. And here's a shot of the really eighth city with a freight train headed toward um, uh, Peoria with uh, three F3s on a point. And the operator here is handing up the uh, clearance to the engineer. Or, the firemen probably on that side. Uh, there were no uh, train order boards here in the uh, era I'm currently modeling in the 60s uh, because in the uh, special instructions, uh, it was written that every train that came by each city had to have a clearance. So there was no need to have an order board. Uh, if you didn't see the operator out on the platform, you had to stop and find out where the heck he was. So. Anyway, here's a, moving ahead, uh, here's a shot in 1985 in a BN era. You can see the depot's still there, but it's looking a little worse for wear now. Here's a, another shot of the Yates City looking uh, eastward toward uh, Galesburg. You can see the track on the right here heading down into the uh, coal fields in Fulton County there where they hauled a heck of a lot of coal. There were some years where they actually hauled uh, more coal out of this area than they did out of all of Southern Illinois on the CB and Q. Hmm. Now, keep an eye on this grain elevator here, which is, is currently still there. Uh, now we're gonna jump back to 1963, a year before I'm modeling. And uh, you can see the grain elevator back then was pretty uncluttered. There aren't even any elevator legs or anything next to it or piping and all that stuff. So. When I found that out, I was really happy because I hadn't finished the model yet. So this will make it a lot easier. I just wonder if any of you guys out there are familiar with these type of uh, uh, granaries, this little building here with the, the three gables on it, the raised one in the middle. And because uh, I've seen these out on a lot of farms in Illinois, and uh, I think they were mainly used as corn cribs. But uh, 
Boy, I'd like to find a plan for one. I don't know if the elevator was using this. There was a lumber yard back there in those days that could have been used by the lumber yard. No. Oh. But there were a lot more weeds along the right of way back in those days. I'll be adding some of that stuff. Here's another shot of uh, uh, the same uh, steam locomotive that was in the uh, previous photo they had back in the uh, 60s. They ran uh, early 60s. They ran uh, excursion trips for mainly school students and stuff uh, like in uh, toward the end of June, toward when school was letting out and the they usually pick a whole weekend where they ran uh, two trips each day, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, this is, could be the train heading back uh, west toward uh, uh, Galesburg on a Sunday afternoon to return the uh, all the, the cars here that were actually commuter cars. So they had to bring them, take them back to uh, uh, Chicago the next morning or before the next morning. Okay, here's a photo of my layout looking uh, eastward toward Peoria. You can see Highway 8 running over all along here on the left. Uh, and uh, the tracks are shorter, but they're all there. This is the north storage, the main track, the siding, the south storage track, the depot, and the grain elevator off in the distance there. And uh, uh, the Y is over here. Uh, same kind of thing here, looking looking uh, westward. This is uh, Kent Street over here. And here's another shot in uh, the BN era. That I was doing a little over a year ago. Anybody has any questions, just uh, <laughs> shout them out if you have any. Um, okay, here's... Uh, uh, another shot. I scratch build the uh, Eight City Depot all out of styrene and evergreen siding and all that stuff. So I was fortunately I was able to measure all this stuff uh, on site. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, now we're getting into the CB and Q era here a little bit. There's a SD9 switching coal cars at Eight City. Yeah, and this year I, I kind of like caved in and I, I used some micro engineering uh, turnouts and track here. But <laughs> in retrospect, some of that track was harder to lay than it was uh, than was a uh, uh, hand laid track because uh, I don't know it's 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 a, a devil to get some of that stuff straight some of the time. I finally <laughs> built a little you know, jig that you can run along the rails with uh, two grooves in it to straighten the track out. But that worked pretty good. All right, moving on from uh, Eight City, uh, we uh, we uh, come behind. We're actually behind Peoria here. This is a scenic view block at uh, 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 the scenic part of Peoria is on the other side of this. So the main line leaves uh, uh, Eight City in the dis down distance and comes down along the wall here, and then it curves around a curve here, kind of like the prototype does, and then it. Uh, goes back through the wall into the Peoria scene. And what you see over here on the left is uh, just part of the staging area. I also use that as a fiddle yard because I don't have that many staging tracks. So uh, some of the cars on my layout are uh, uh, kept offline on uh, in shelving units and, uh, and uh, some cassettes. Mm. OK, here's a, a real track diagram of the uh, uh, Peoria area on the uh, C, on the CB and Q. Uh, the main line comes in here over the left. Uh, when the M and St. L was there, the M and St. L yard was over here on the left side. And it comes through here, heading uh, into downtown, and then it goes past the big P and P U yard, and then finally into the CB and Q yard. There were a couple stub tracks here in the middle, and uh, I think there's like six or seven. Uh, through tracks over on this side and then 
they, they uh, rebuilt the yard back in about 1960 and they added uh, these longer tracks in here. There, here's a shot of the real Peoria uh, looking kind of a southwesterly direction. This is the Illinois River here. This is the uh, CB and Q yard over here on the right hand corner. Uh, and uh, the main line kind of just goes straight down here and then it curves around and heads up toward Galesburg. But this big, uh, huge complex here is uh, Hiram Walker Distillery, which was uh, for a while the largest distillery in the world. They made a heck of a lot of bourbon there. Uh, uh, Paps Brewing was also there. This is their uh, uh, grist mill area here in the foreground. And uh, one of the prominent features on my Peoria model is the uh, Cedar Street Bridge, which is this bridge here that crosses over from downtown Peoria on the right side over to East Peoria on the left side. And over on the left is East Peoria where Caterpillar tractors and various other industries. There's uh, another scene uh, looking uh, northeastward. Uh, you see the Cedar Street Bridge there, Illinois River, and the little CB&Q yard over here just covered with a sea of grass. So I'm assuming this isn't about the year I'm modeling now. So I, I'm gonna need to put a lot more grass in my yard tracks. Here's a, a CB and Q train uh, arriving at Peoria. Well, this is, well, this was a Don Ross shot from 1960. It's uh, passing under the Cedar Street Bridge here. The yard is train. Looks like there's a slug of Milwaukee road cars in here. That might have something to do with Paps Brewing because there was Paps Brewing in Peoria and Milwaukee. So this would have been uh, train 70 coming in uh, Peoria here, maybe about nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, this is the counterpart of that train, train 91, leaving uh, Peoria to go back to Galesburg with uh, you know, either two F3s and two F7s or four F3s. Uh, for anybody that's interested in M and St. L, this is the uh, M and St. L bridge over here on the right side before that was ripped out. Uh, yep. CB and Q bridge in the middle and the Chicago Northwestern uh, over here on the left. This is train is leaving uh, Peoria to go back to Galesburg and it's Passing over the uh, Kickapoo Creek, which goes under all three of these bridges here, and then finally dumps into the Illinois River at Peoria. Here's a shot of the uh, Hiram Walker grain elevators taken from underneath the Cedar Street Bridge, uh, looking across the uh, yard. And the oh, this is a mid 70s shot of the BN yard down there. And uh, I decided I was going to model uh, June of 1964, just pick one month to zero in on. And uh, I didn't even know this, but this one of the fan trips here took, uh, or excursion trips took place in June. I guess they usually did take place in June. But uh, so this is, uh, I think, June 21st, 1964. And they're getting the 4960 here ready to go back to uh, Yates City turn their train and come back and do their two uh, trips on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, you see all the grass in the yard back in those days. They mm -hmm. weren't much for a uh, <clears throat> killer. <laughs> uh, the CB and Q used some uh, kind of uh, uh, orphaned uh, equipment down there as switch engines. They even uh, this motor car had run out west in the uh, Colorado area, and uh, they brought it back to Galesburg, spruced it up, and the, they actually used this as the switch engine in Peoria during uh, the summer of 1964. Uh, I don't know how I worked it out for them, but I thought it'd be kind of a cumbersome thing to use for a switch engine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's a view of my layout looking, well, it'd be mostly a northerly direction on a real railroad. Uh, you got Faber Musser over here that was a plaster and uh, uh, plasterboard and uh, <clears throat> lumber supplier and that sort of thing. 
And uh, so this is my uh, CB and Q yard. Um, looks a lot more like CB and Q uh, or 1964 than it did a year ago. There's no more green cars in there. And most of the cars were uh, are 40 footers. I found out by looking through the ORER that uh, on the CB and Q, 80% of the box cars on the railroad in 1964 were still 40 footers. Yeah, here's another shot. And that, that's an old car that Dave gave me. I, what was that car, Dave? That's that uh, brass metal one. And it's probably an old Atherton. Yeah, right. That's or, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Or, or Varney, uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, I think it was Atherton. Anyway, Men, uh, it's kind of my Bible man. here for uh, placing cars on the railroad. This is my 1964 ORER. The cars aren't in there. Well, they don't go on the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another shot of the yard here. Yeah, I've got to put a lot more cinders in the yard because back in those days, they didn't have all that nice rock ball ballast that was mostly cinders. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, was able to save uh, some of the cars from the new era by... I had taken the roof walks off of them and that sort of thing. And uh, now I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting roof walks back on, on some of the cars that uh, fit the era. There's a whole string of cars at my uh, Kielsen model uh, cars that are were uh, backdated with paint jobs and new decals or, uh, or new cars that I purchased that are getting ready to be weathered. Yeah, here's another shot at Gilson. Uh, this is, a, I can't remember what this car was, but uh, there's another box, old box car I've been fixing up. I, I put the uh, retainer valve piping on here and the cut levers and the brake rods, that sort of thing. Uh, Based on the up, thinness of the uh, of, of the door, I'd say that's also a metal car. Yeah, uh, well, this car is completely steel. In fact, this is this is where my I could tell you my short uh, circuit story, but I won't delve into that right now. <laughs> Another shot of the same car doesn't look too bad when you put the right details on it. And now we're back in Peoria here, switching the yard. Uh, my only uh, CB and Q switch engine right now, but it it runs great. I uh, I use our Real Pro for. Uh, uh, running my railroad. It's working out really well so far. There's a, a pair of uh, SD7s I have, uh, having just yarded their train, bringing, uh, coming under the uh, Cedar Street Bridge here at Peoria. And another shot looking the other direction at the under the bridge. Are you using electrostatic grass? Yes, I am. Yep. In nice. fact, I built my own electrostatic grass, whatever you want to, <laughs> grass installation <Dispenser>. machine. <laughs> I think I got a, a, there's a place called Golden Electronics, I think. And you could sell, you could buy the uh, electrostatic mechanism for uh, $13. So I built the whole thing for like under 20 bucks. I, the the main container is like a cream cheese container. You put a screen over it, uh, or you cut the cover out and put a screen over it, and use that mm -hmm. to load it up with uh, nice. that grass material. Yeah, here's uh most of the buildings I'm uh, I'm doing in uh, Peoria all scratch built. This is this is the uh, this served as their uh, depot here after the Union Station in Peoria closed. Uh, so I was able to measure this here too and make some detailed drawings of it. So I, I scratch built this. This is still in the BN era. I need to change the color of the trim now. The CB and Q is a much darker green than the, the BN Cascade green. Yeah, here's a shot of the real thing back around, oh, probably 1959 or so. And uh, I'm going to be building this structure over here. This was uh, Dawes Manufacturing, and there was a big Quonset hut here, too, that I'm going to scratch build. Yeah, there's a... I just built this pole here to match the one in the back in the picture there. So 
<laughs> I got to hang a light on it here yet. But uh, it's get, starting to look a little more CBQ ish from uh, the BN era. Definitely. And there's another shot looking uh, northward or railroad east. Now, uh, one of the uh, peculiar things, or I don't know, maybe not peculiar things about the Peoria area was the CB and Q had a alley track that went uh, that left the yard and went downtown in this big long alley, and they had a series of uh, industries there. One of them was the scrapyard, which is it was the uh, A Miller Company, which. Uh, just closed last week. I mean, it wasn't rail served for probably the last 10 years, but uh, so they packed up the whole thing and shut it down. Uh, another scrap uh, company bought it. But uh, yeah, they'd really heap up the scrap here. And this is uh, my model of it. I got to heap up the scrap a little higher, I guess. And so this is kind of my alley here. They also had a, this auxiliary building here where they load uh, lead acid batteries in the boxcars to take to uh, some recycling place in Chicago. I just noticed uh, looking at this uh, trashed automobile here, it's a little too new for my ear. That's probably like a, what, about a 1970 LTD or something, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a shot of the LA with a BN switcher uh, switching the scrapyard area. Yeah, another shot of the alley. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the CB and Q did have a a small uh, piggyback uh, facility there. It could hold like three cars. And this was the tail track going to the alley. The BN switchers hauling a empty gondola in there for the scrapyard. And uh, another shot of the piggyback terminal. This is an old uh, Ulrich uh, uh, Kenworth uh tractor i'm trying to restore or refurbish and i just stole a fifth wheel off a of atherin truck and put it on there well, it looks a little better now still got to add some clearance lights and horns and all that stuff and put some glazing in the windshield <laughs> yeah this is another shot i took this tractor's probably going to be gone i think it's a little too new <laughs> And then we come to the uh, railroads, the uh, CB and Q interchange with, and uh, I'm able to model a couple of those on the layout. This is the Peoria and Pekin Union Railroad, which was the uh, main terminal railroad in Peoria. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they uh, took uh, a lot of the uh, transfer work from the CB and Q. The CB and Q only uh, directly interchanged with the uh, the Rock Island, the TP and W, and the uh, and the uh, P and P U here. So the P and P U is uh, known to the locals as the uh, P poo or the P and poo <laughs> from their initials. <laughs> so <laughs> this is one of my uh, P poo locomotives <laughs> that I was able to get. Uh, and uh, I've also got a little bit of TP and W on there. Uh, this engine is like in the early 1980s scheme, so it's way too new. I've got to repaint this into a, a dark uh, olive green color, and the striping is going to be yellow. But they did have this was a SW or a GP18, their one and only GP18, number 600 which was around in uh, 1964. So it's going to stay on the layout, but uh, going to get a new paint job. And this is toward the end of my uh, thing here. This is uh, the scrapyard that just I told you about that just recently closed just this last week. And, uh, and uh, I thought I'd put this flag up here to, to show the end of the presentation. Uh, this was uh, uh, Peoria just uh, oh, about a month ago. Uh, what was left of the CB and Q yard here was in the weeds and the trees and all that. And uh, they finally just removed the track from that. So that's that's really the end. <laughs> uh, the uh, BNSF still goes down there and uh, 
they still uh, interchange with uh, what was the owned by the PMP is the Tazewell and Peoria Railroad now. But uh, in the era I'm modeling, uh, there were uh, 14 railroads, different railroads in Peoria, the Norfolk and Western, the Illinois Terminal, the TPW, the Chicago Northwestern, the Rock Island, the Illinois Central, the GMNO, the PNPU, the Nickel Plate, the CNIM, the PE, which was the New York Central, uh, that's the Peoria and Eastern, and uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad, and the Peoria Terminal, which was a subsidiary of the Rock Island. And a couple of years before that, the M and St. L was there too. So that would have made 15 railroads in Peoria. So wow. uh, anybody got any questions, let me know. That's the end. <laughs> uh, nice job, Ken. That was really, really great and beautiful model. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. It looks great. Sure. I could have got into the operating and all that stuff, but uh, well, you're welcome to present again. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I uh, I do a train order, uh, uh, yeah, a timetable train order operation. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. When Dave's over, we have a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, she, he's like the Galesburg operator, so and I'm usually the dispatcher and. Uh, I dictate train orders to him and he writes them up, gives them to the train crew and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I've uh, I got to make up a new timetable now. I had a pretty nice one for the BN. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm working on all that stuff. Uh, and uh, use Rail Pro and Rail Links for operating, uh, controlling the layout. Uh, I, I started out with, uh, oh gosh, well, DC and block control and uh, then worked up my way to, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, uh, and then finally I got Dynatrol and uh, well, that kind of went out the window, but uh, I still power the layout with Dynatrol because it has a nice... Uh, uh, circuit breaker protection thing on it and the voltage is correct for using dcc or rail pro or rail links uh, i changed over to rail links from dynatrol because uh, the control of the locomotives uh, all you need is power on the track you could actually battery power the locomotives if you wanted to same thing with rail pro that i have now except uh Rail, rail links was uh infrared control like you use with your uh, tv remote and uh, Rail Pro is uh, radio control, which is really nice because I don't have to point the controllers in the general direction of the locomotives or anything like that. So uh, actually, I think I still have a locomotive or two that can still run on Dynatrol. So it can run three systems on the layout right now. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yep, that's uh, kind of my story. Yeah, great. Sorry job. about the the late start and not being able to get on. I never had that happen before. Yeah, no problem at all. I mean, once you got <laughs> going, you were uh, you were on a roll. No, no problems there. So. Okay, great. Yeah, I tried to rush it yeah. get it going so we'd get done in time. <laughs> yeah, no, we're I probably all, could have uh, elaborated on some things, but <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll have plenty of chances for that. So great okay. job. Well, my camera still didn't go on, so you didn't have to see my ugly face. <laughs> <laughs> You saw you in your uniform. I was, you're looking pretty good there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks. You're kind. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's see. I, let me pull my schedule up here, and I'll give you the teaser for next week. Let's see. Yeah. Next week, we'll have uh, uh, Keith Coleman is actually going to be on. Keith is a, an author and uh, is presented for our division a couple Saturdays. Or a couple months ago, maybe it was April, I can't remember now, but Keith is going to do a session next week on realistic outdoor photography. So that should be interesting. Oh, yeah. And so we'll look forward to that. Great job, Ken. We really enjoyed and appreciate you sticking with it. <laughs> you know, when you get into the meetings, so. Glad you stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> I should have... Uh... I should have thought of rebooting the computer right away. That always seems to uh, cure things. <laughs> yeah, a reboot is always a healthy thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, I had that happen at work recently where uh, 
something just wasn't working right. And <laughs> I yeah. call her computer guru up and he got, yeah, reboot the computer again. <laughs> so I shut yeah. up. <laughs> that's, the, that's the expert advice uh, every now and then. Yeah. Give it a fresh start. Well, so thank you very, yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Ken. All right. Well, next week, like I say, Keith Coleman and thanks everybody for coming. Have a great week and we'll see you next, next Thursday. See you guys. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm.